morning grade tens. Today we're going to talk about factoring polynomials when there is that number in front of the x squared. So let's take a look at um, these tiles. Here I've got these two x squared tiles and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven x tiles and then there's three ones over here. So this rectangle represents the polynomial 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Remember that represents the area, so that's the actual area here of the rectangle. Now I can break it into its factors by breaking it into its side lengths. So when I look at the side length on the top here, there's two x's and then there's plus one there at the end. And then here there's one x but there's plus three at the end. So that means the factors would be 2x plus 1 and x plus 3. Now when I look at this, it should make sense. See how there's a 2 out in front? So if I were foiling, the 2x times the 1x would give me that 2x squared. So again, um, the factors represent the side lengths. Okay? And the polynomial represents the area. Now let's take a look at just a couple of examples here. Remember that we can expand these by multiplying them. You have the choice of using FOIL or the box method. So when we're doing the box method, we would put the 3d plus the 4 on one side and the 4d plus the 2 on the other side, and now we're going to find the area by multiplying them together. So 3d times 4d is 12d squared. 4 times 4d is 16d. 3d times 2 is 6d and then 4 times 2 is 8. So when I combine my like terms here, we'll end up with 12d squared plus 22d plus 8. So that would be a polynomial if you multiply these out. The other option is that you actually FOIL. So we go first times first. So we get 10e squared, outer, which is 20e, inner, which is 6e, and then last, which is 12. Again, combine like terms, to get 10e squared plus 26e plus 12. Pause the video here if you need a chance to um, work through this on your own. Let's take a look at these ones then. How are these ones different than the previous example? Um, well, I can see that these ones have some negatives. So the negatives shouldn't make it any different in process, but you have to bring those negative along when you're foiling. So if I go the negative 2g times the 7, I get negative 14g negative 2g times negative 3g is a positive 6g squared. 8 and 7 is 56, and then 8 times negative 3g is negative 24g. Now looking at my, my like terms, the negative 14g and the negative 24g are the same. And when I put it in descending order, I start with the 6g squared, then I put the g's together to get negative 38g plus the 56. So that will be your final answer for the polynomial. Remember that you could also use the box method. So we could go 6t minus 9 and 7 minus 5t. So when I take the 6t and the 7, we get 42t. The 7 and the negative 9 is negative 63. The 6t and the negative 5t is negative 30t squared, because they both have a t. And negative 5t and negative 9 is positive 45t. So again, looking at like terms, the 42t and the 45t would be like terms. So when we combine them, we're going to get 87t. So we're going to get negative 30t squared plus 87t minus 63 for your final answer. Try this one on your own, please. And then check your answer with that on the board. Okay, now that we've remembered how to FOIL and how to multiply, we're going to go backwards and figure out how to divide or factor. So remember what we talked about before. We have this 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. That represents the area. So that's this whole triangle here. But now if I break it up into the side lengths, that's the factors. So here we have 2x plus 3. And on the side, x plus 1. So this could be factored into 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. Again, notice how when there's that front number, the 2x times the x is how you get that 2x squared in the front. So if you FOIL this, it should get back to what you started with. Now when you do this, there are two different methods that we can use. The first method I'm going to show you is called the box method, and that's because it relates to what we were just talking about. Also, it relates to the box method when we're multiplying. So 
Either way, when we start a question like this, we're always going to go, okay, two numbers that add to get your real number, and the two numbers that multiply to get the first times the last. So 4 times 9 is 36. We've actually been doing that all along, but before, we didn't have a number in front, and it was just 1. So when we did, went 1 times the back number, it would just ended up being the back number. Okay, so now we're going to look at this and figure out what our two numbers are. They're going to be 18 and 2. So remember that that 18 plus that 2 equals 20. So that means that 18 and the 2 are actually um, the 28 when you put them together. So in the box method, I'm going to make a little box. The front part of my polynomial is going to go in the front of the box. The back part of my polynomial is going to go in the back of the box. Then the 18 and the 2 that we found that equals 20H is going to split into the other two boxes, so the 18H and the 2H. Again, that's just my 20H. So now we're going to work backwards, and we're going to find the side lengths of the box. All I have to do to do that is remove the GCF from each row and each column. So first I'm going to look at these two. So 4H squared and 18H, what's common there is going to be a 2H, so my GCF is 2H. Now I'm going to look at the 2H and the 9. There doesn't seem to be anything common there, so I'm just going to remove a positive 1 from my GCF. Now we're going to go up and down, so 4H squared and 2H, so what's common there is a 2H. And now I'm looking at my 18H and my 9, and what's common there is a positive 9. So the factors are 2H plus 1 and 2H plus 9. So that's using something called the box method. Now if you're an algebraic thinker, you're going to maybe prefer this decomp method. So when we're doing decomp, step one is the same. We're still going to figure out two numbers that add to get to 20H and two numbers that multiply to get to 36. Then what we're going to do is we're going to write it out. So we have 4H squared plus 20H plus 9. But that 20H, we're going to break into that 18 and that 2 like we did before. So 4H squared plus 18H plus 2H plus 9. So again, I just broke the middle 20H into an 18H and a 2H. Now we're going to separate it into a front bracket and a back bracket, just to group them together, and we'll remove the GCF from each bracket. So when I look at a 4H squared and an 18H, I can divide them both by a 2H, so the 2H is going to be in front. When I divide 4H squared by 2H, I'm still left with 2H, and 18H divided by 2H is 9. Then I look at the back bracket, there's nothing that I can divide them by except the 1. So I'm just going to divide out a positive 1, leaving me still with 2h plus 9. Now when I look at the brackets, I see that the 2h plus 9s are the same. So now that's actually my new GCF. So I'm going to remove the 2h plus 9 from each term, leaving me with a 2h plus a 1. So my factors are 2h plus 9 and 2h plus 1, same as they were here in the box method. You'll notice that the order is different, but remember the order doesn't matter because it's just multiplying, so you can multiply them either way. Let's try another example here by doing both ways, both box method and decomp. We have 6k squared minus 11k minus 35, and remember either way we're going to start with two numbers that add to get negative 11 and multiply to get the first times the last, so 6 times negative 35 is negative 210. So when I look at this, I see that negative 21 times 10 would add to get to negative 11 and multiply to get to negative 210. Now if I'm using the box method, the front part of my polynomial, so the 6k squared, is going to go in the front of the box. The negative 35 is going to go in the back of the box. That negative 11 is split into two pieces, a negative 21k and a positive 10k. Now from here we just remove the GCF out of each row and column. So looking at 6k squared minus 21k, I see that I can remove a GCF of 3k. Out of the bottom here, I have a 10k minus 35, which means I'm going to remove a positive 5. Now looking to the call. So 6k squared and 10k means 2k can be removed. And negative 21k and negative 35 tells me that negative 7 can be removed. The only trick with the box method is that you have to take the sign from the top box, or the first box. So negative 21k, I'm going to remove the negative. Even if the 35 was positive, I would still be removing the negative because the 21 is negative. So there we go, we have our factors. 3k plus 5 and 2k minus 7.
now let's go through the same thing but with decomp. So if we're using decomp, we would write out our original polynomial and then split that negative 11 into 21k and 10k. So we have 6k squared minus 21k plus 10k minus 35. From there, we're going to group the front and group the back into brackets and then remove the GCF from each bracket. So looking at the front part here, 3k can come out of both 6 and 21. So I'm going to remove the 3k, leaving me with a 2k minus 7. And then in the back bracket, I can remove a GCF of 5. That's a positive 5 because the 10 is positive, leaving me with a 2k minus 7. Now again, you should notice that your brackets here are the same. So your 2k minus 7 and your 2k minus 7 are the same. Remember that if they're not the same, you've got a mistake and you're going to need to go back and fix it. So here we'll remove our GCF of 2k minus 7, leaving me with those front numbers of 3k plus 5. So again, the same factors as we got before using the box method. So for your homework today, I'd like you to please take a look at the first column of part D under the handout that you've been working through.